All right, welcome back to Great Northern Cascades Division in N scale. Uh, wiring here maybe looks a little bit neater than it did last time. All of the wiring for the DC accessory bus is now done and in place. Uh, mine is just needing to very, very quickly heat shrink uh, some of those connectors. But just got back from Christmas vacation, had a fun couple of weeks back in England. Uh, I've shared a couple of different videos now as, uh, as we did some train stuff while we were over there. It's a little bit different than American stuff if that's mostly what you're here to follow. Uh, but I, I thought it was kind of neat riding, riding the trains over there. I used to do that a lot when I, when I was growing up in England, so it was fun to be back there. Um, but anyway, back to making some progress here. Like I say, all the DC accessory bus is now put together. Um, so a few little videos walking through how I got this done, and then probably is going to be moving on to lighting the layouts. Then we can actually start some work on the upper deck and get some track and get some of the DCC connections done pretty soon. So thanks for watching this one. So that's all of the black lines for DC negative lines patched in. Um, now that they're all in place and kind of done uh, some of the cable management, uh, clean it up a little bit, probably shorten up a few of these. There's some excess cabling in there. It doesn't really need to stay there. Same over on the positive side. Um, so I'll probably just clean that up, shorten them up so it's a little bit more uniform and then get the heat shrinking on them and then go ahead and put the bars across the top as well so basically that just patches it in so that when you put one feed in it basically patches it through because otherwise the idea is that you could just have one cable coming in then patch out one cable coming in and then patch out um, but for this particular purpose, you basically want to just have one positive feed coming in, one negative feed coming in from that 12 volt DC power adapter, and then all 12 lines that then feed out are then going to take that power away. So that's why there's those bars across the top. DCC will be a little bit different. I'm not going to patch those in right now. I think I talked about in the previous video um, that even though I've got the wiring run out pretty much to where the different districts are going to be, they'll actually connect into, I think it's the PM74 um, from Digitrax, which is uh, basically gives you four different power districts. And then from the PM74, that will then connect into one of the DCC boosters. Um, so they're not going. So the DCC ones aren't going to get patched in quite the same as this. There'll be three or four of the lines that will go into one of those PM74s, um, and they might be spread out a little bit more than just patching straight in here. Um, so I'll get the heat shrink on these. Well, I'll get them shortened a little bit, it's a bit more uniform. Get the heat shrink on these, and then there's plastic covers that pop over the top of them as well. And then we can check it out and see how it's all done once it's finished. All right, so this is now with all of those lines kind of a little bit shortened and patched in. I also went ahead and did the actual DC power itself. So right now, this is a 12 volt, I think it's a 3 or a 5 amp power supply that I had lying around. I'm not sure exactly how much I'm going to need on that DC accessory bus, but that'll do for now. I'll at least get some power running out to it. 
and just connects in through a pigtail right here just to make it easy to screw in and out. Somewhat unsurprisingly, my little uh, cheap Amazon mini heat gun decided that after sitting outside in the really, really cold Minnesota winter uh, in the garage here, decided I didn't want to work. Um, so I need to get another heat gun just so that I can finish up the actual ends on those. But otherwise, everything's in place. One thing that I did do as well was label everything. And so there's a couple of different ways that you can approach uh, keeping track of wiring on a large layout like this. I've built a couple of layouts and I've worked on a couple of pretty large show layouts as well um, at the club that I was a part of before we moved out here. Um, so you can kind of try and do something logically based on colors, which I've done. Uh, black and red here and then the DCC is going to be blue and white. So you can do some kind of logical separation based on colors. You can also then kind of patch things in in a logical way in terms of moving left to right around the layout, up and down throughout the layout, which I've done here as well. Um, really you're going to forget it in six months or in three years or in ten years when something actually is going wrong on the layout and you need to troubleshoot. And some people write this down in a book and well, then you've got to have the notebook and you've got to be able to find the right page in the notebook. And honestly, just from experience, it's a little bit OCD maybe and it's a little bit tedious and time consuming, but label everything, absolutely everything. Just so that if you ever need it for whatever reason, you can quickly get to it. If I come back to this in 10 years, I'm not having to try and remember exactly how it was put together. If I have uh, other folks coming around, work parties or whatever in the future, and we're doing some work on the layout and they want to try and troubleshoot something or they want to try and make sure that a certain area of the track is disconnected or for whatever reason, very, very easy to come in and figure out exactly how to do that. So I'll do a similar kind of thing when it comes to actually putting all the DCC uh, connections in place on the Digitrack system, just to make sure that's very, very quick and easy to troubleshoot and keep track of things. Um, signaling, anything to do with signal lights, um, point motors, things like that. Um, again, from experience, it, it, it looks great when you're first doing it and it's neat and tidy and then three months later you patch a couple of other things in and then a year later you patch in a few other things and then three years go by and you come back and you've got a short somewhere and you've got to try and figure out where it is um, and the, the 20 minutes, 30 minutes that I spent, you know, putting all those, uh, putting all those levels on will be worthwhile. So, like I said, I, I need to get another heat gun to try and wrap it up, but at least for now, uh, I'm going to call this one good. I'm not really using anything, so I'm not that concerned about potential shorts or anything, but just best practices that you would uh, you would put a heat gun just under the end right here so that you'll be able to uh, make sure that you've got a clean connection and there's no sparks or whatever that can that can come back but functionally this is now all the DCC bus done uh, fairly quick and easy uh, I knew this one was going to be somewhat painless to do um, and then now whenever I want to actually start patching things in the DC bus there we go we can go ahead and do that uh, I'll probably end up doing something very similar for lighting uh, I'm looking at going with LED lighting it gets a little bit pricey um, but any kind of lighting is to be honest but I'll do something probably very similar with LED lighting um, probably is patch in like this it'll need to be a little bit more beefier power supply than that 12 volt 5 amp um, power brick but I think that's going to be the next one I at least need to get um, lighting done for the upper deck because that's going to be the first one that's going to get worked on so we'll call this video uh, an end for now and come back pretty soon with a little bit more on uh, on that lighting thanks for watching take care bye, -bye.